Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry. Today I'd like to discuss some of the possibilities I expect to shake out when it comes to dual worm prints. In case you aren't aware, we recently received an update that laid out where the development team currently stands. As of now, their plan is to allow us to equip two different worm prints per adventurer with abilities from worm prints stacking up to a certain limit. Equipping two identical worm prints is not allowed, and the feature will unlock after beating Chapter 4. All of this is subject to change according to Director Matsura, but I still thought it'd be fun to do some theory crafting and think about what combinations will work well together. As part of this conversation, I'll also tell you what some of my favorite prints are and how I'd suggest you spend your unbinding keys. I'm a big fan of the dual worm print idea, since I think it addresses many issues with the game at once. It makes worm prints feel less bad as pulls from the gacha, it enables some genuine build variety, and it allows an even greater variety of adventurers to take on endgame content with the right setups and builds. Of course, since this update isn't out yet at the time of recording, I'll need to make a few assumptions here. The biggest unknowns are whether existing content will be rebalanced and made harder to account for dual worm prints, and the extent to which the same abilities will actually stack. I'll assume for now that old content won't be touched, while new content will be designed with dual worm prints in mind. I'll also try to avoid stacking the same ability in a lot of the ideas I put forward here. Since at the end of the day this is all speculative, I hope you take this theory crafting with a grain of salt. I definitely recommend you wait until dual worm prints are released to use your keys and start unbinding. I'd also like to add that, in case you don't know, you should almost always wait to actually unbind until you can fully do so, because only at max unbinding do a worm prints abilities actually get upgraded. You do get that sweet art change at two unbindings of course, so take that with a grain of salt too. With those caveats out of the way, where do we begin? Well, two great worm prints separately might be great together, right? So let's start by talking over which worm prints I'd consider staples right now. It may come as a surprise to only see three types of worm prints on this list, but these reflect the status quo as far as recurring content and the end game goes. In raids, the shapeshift prep on Dragon Arcanum, Dragon's Nest, and King's Countenance is very popular and potent since it stacks across team lines to all allies. In facility events, the free or gacha event prints du jour are used to grind. And finally, in high dragon trials, the proper defensive worm prints are used to survive the opening blast and meet the HP check. For all other types of content, you can pretty much get by with whatever prints you happen to have. My hunch is that as far as your primary worm prints go, Nothing will really change with the introduction of two slots. I still think shapeshift prep will help with raids, grinding prints will help with facility events, and that the high dragon res prints will help for the endgame, perhaps even in their zero unbound forms now. In my view, instead of completely opening things up, the main difference is that we'll now have an additional choice to make about what to use in our second worm print slots. Since duplicates are not allowed and stacking is going to be limited to some extent, this is where we can start to get creative, and hopefully find a home for some of the more interesting and powerful 4 and 5 star gacha worm prints. Even if you're a free to play player and don't have access to a ton of rare gacha prints, many of the free 5 star worm prints we've gotten during facility events are quite good when you consider their availability and ease to max unbind. Their stats are worse, their abilities are weaker, but a lot of these free worm prints are perfectly serviceable when compared to gacha 5 stars. I would never suggest you spend keys to unbind them of course, since playing out events proactively lets you do do so for free. But some of the budget options I like best are Hitting the Books, Plunder Pals, Astounding Trick, and Luis's Hobbies. The stats on these worm prints are higher than on Gotcha 4 star prints once Max Unbound, even though they only provide one ability instead of two. 
and the abilities they provide are significant. Hitting the books and plunder pals are identical, granting 25% skill damage. This is great on adventurers whose first skill is an attacking one, and gets even better the more attacking skills an adventurer has, especially if those skills are fast to charge. Luis's hobbies, meanwhile, is basically the equivalent except for healers. It's best in class among the free healing worm prints, edging out Take My Hand since it has slightly higher stats. To round things out, Astounding Trick is good on just about anyone since it provides 10% strength while the user's HP is above 70%. A fairly universal bonus, but it especially helps adventurers who rely less on skill damage and more on buffs. Elisan, Sinoa, Melody, Ryozin, and Sabella come to mind as adventurers whose primary skill is a team buff rather than an attack or heal. Some of the other event worm prints we've gotten like Petal Queen, A Slice of Dragon Yule, and Honest Repose are also valuable in a secondary slot, but their ideal use cases are narrower. Even if you've never summoned and only have access to these free worm prints, we're already talking about a fairly significant upgrade to the power level of your teams. For general content like daily quests, Imperial Onslaught, and Void Battles, you don't even have to follow the rubrics set forward by raids, facility events, and high dragon trials, meaning you can mix and match these free prints with one another or any gacha worm prints you're fond of in your collection. And in many cases, gacha prints are stronger than these freebies. So let's begin discussing which of those I like best, starting with the 4 stars. I skip right to 4 star because the only 3 star I advise keeping is Dragon's Nest thanks to its shapeshift prep. On the topic of shapeshift prep, King's Countenance is one of the best 4 star worm prints. The 25% curse res is just a bonus, and it can come in handy if your favorite adventurer only has 75% curse res naturally. This worm print need not be restricted to raids though. On a coordinated team, a full set of this means you'll begin a match with 40% of the dragon gauge filled, which isn't trivial for speed clears in void battles or for more niche strats like a no healer clear of high midgard swarmer, where Phoenix is used by all four teammates. For its use in raids alone though, regardless of meme strategies, I think this is a good use for silver keys. Bouncing off the 25% curse res on King's Countenance, I'll add that any 4 star worm print with 25% or higher resistance to an affliction can be good if your favorite character lacks 100% natural resistance and if the print you're looking at gets them there. Saintly Delivery and Silk Lends a Hand are especially good seasonal prints since they grant 15% skill damage as well as 25% resistance to stun and blind, respectively. Still, I'd only use keys on prints in this group to specifically support a favorite character. The added elemental resistance on many prints in this category may also be nice against high dragons, but it's hard to say just how much it'll stack with the 5% resistance that's built into the high dragon worm prints. If it stacks fully up to 10%, this could make some ranged adventures like Xania and Joe easier to run. Lastly, among the four stars, a couple of worm prints really stand out to me because there aren't many equivalent options at higher rarity. Both of these combine 15% skill damage with a primary ability focused on four strikes. First, Fresh Perspective, which grants an extra 30% four strike damage. This is probably the most consistent four star offensive print, since unlike criticals, four strikes are non-random. The second worm print is Together We Stand because that has striker strength of 4%. This gives the user a 4% strength boost for every three foes defeated with four strikes up to five times per quest, making it perfect for the challenge battle and facility events where you can stack 20% strength reliably. A weakness to both of these worm prints, of course, is that they're ineffective on AI since they don't use four strikes at all. Now let's move on to the 5 star gacha prints I like the most. I'll start with some options that I'd consider niche, yet very powerful. Flash of Genius, Crystallian Envoy, Luca's Prank, and Dragon and Tamer are all excellent, but only at their best against a specific opposing element. These are the types of prints you'll be looking at if you want to ditch the high dragon worm prints alongside dragons like Prometheus and Gilgamesh. With Dragon and Tamer being an obvious exception, 
They're also great for ranged characters who might otherwise struggle with the HP entry requirements due to their lower defense. I would be remiss not to mention the Chocolatiers, A Wish Upon the Yule Tree, and Give Me Your Wounded in the same vein. All three of these worm prints can be used to lower the entry requirements of High Dragon Trials, with the latter two having some useful applications throughout the match, and with the Chocolatiers allowing you to say, bring in ranged adventurers using pure strength dragons by casting a team defense buff immediately. If you love meme or gimmick clears, the Chocolatiers is already a top choice to unbind. Otherwise, I think Give Me Your Wounded has shot up to become the best healing worm print, although you can also make the case for the Warrior Maiden, since that doubles as a killer print for facility events. And a Wish Upon the Yule Tree can make any adventurer with access to a recurring defense buff nigh unkillable. To this end, it's also very good in autoing IO and void battles. Armor's Aspirations can serve as a budget means to lower entry requirements at 4 star, but I'm less a fan of it since the the second ability of Poison Res, for the time being, seems to be irrelevant in the endgame. If you are the type who wants to bring an uncommon adventurer to endgame content, then some other 5-star worm prints to consider are Heavenly Holiday, A Solitary Light, and the Rose Prince, due to their abilities to outright block certain afflictions. The investment is steep considering that's the only use of these prints for now, but that could change with more multi-affliction content in the future. Some other worm prints I like at 5 star are extremely powerful, but specific in who can use them. The Shining Overlord is quite possibly the strongest worm print in the game when used on a sword unit. Kung Fu Masters, likewise, is excellent on axe units, although I wouldn't say it's always their best option. Valiant Crown is also fantastic thanks to its skill damage, but its strength double buff is only really maximized on an adventurer with access to a defense buff, either through a teammate or built in. Stellar Show is another worm print I love due to its massive 4 strike damage boost, but I also feel the critical damage is somewhat wasted unless the user has already heightened their critical rate somehow. And that finally brings me to the 5 star worm prints I'd consider the best. In order of my preference starting at the bottom, Levin's Champion, Jewels of the Sun, Heralds of Hinamoto, and Resounding Rendition. Levin's Champion has a lot of natural synergy, but still relies on a user whose kit emphasizes criticals, like Ieyasu or Mikoto to do its best. Otherwise, I don't think it achieves its full potential. Jewels of the Sun works great on just about anyone, since its abilities are so universal. But the weakness it has, in my view, is that the strength buff is fairly small and the skill haste may or may not matter, depending on the individual adventurer's SP cost. Then we get into the top two, Heralds of Hinamoto and Resounding Rendition. Heralds of Hinamoto's skill haste won't always make a huge difference, but this worm print may be better to unbind using golden keys since it was a seasonal and you won't summon duplicates. Resounding Rendition, on the other hand, probably has more raw power, not to mention possible synergy with other critical buffs, so I do think it's slightly better. Either one of these are very powerful, but I will provide one caveat. As strong as they are, Heralds of Hinamoto and Resounding Rendition don't fundamentally do much different than your freebie 5-star prints hitting the books and plunder pals. Sure, they'll have slightly better stats and second abilities, but max unbinding these does little to alter what your account can do. When compared to other, more specific worm prints, like a Wish Upon the Yule Tree or the Warrior Maiden. Sometimes raw power trumps novelty, but I just want to point out that these prints may be overkill. To wrap things up, I'll reiterate that I don't think dual worm prints will be as dramatic a change as I first expected. I think many of the same worm prints will be used, like skill damage on attackers, recovery potency on healers, and other abilities like HP of 70% equals strength on adventurers who fall in between. There's no question that the stats from an extra worm print between 150 and 200 extra HP and 50 to 70 extra strength, along with resistance or defensive abilities, will push certain adventurers to more easily meet high dragon thresholds, especially if they're ranged. On the whole, 
level, it'll make requirements on having rare five-star dragons less strict too. There's also more possibility for shenanigans to cheese the entry requirements of high dragons in general, but I still think the tried and true worm prints we use now, plus a broad U second print, will emerge as the new status quo. Everything else, while cute, seems like it may fall more into niche or meme territory. Hopefully, either way, we'll find out very soon. And well, that's about all I want to say on dual worm prints, which existing worm prints I like, and what I'd suggest you spend your silver and golden keys on. I'm very curious to hear what you think about all this in the comments below. Do you agree with my assessment? Disagree with points? Are there some sleeper prints I didn't mention in this video? I'd love to hear what you have to say. With that, thank you so much for watching, take care everyone, and I'll see you next time.